off, on and off. Hey guys, this is Inka, and in this video, I will only be making Gordon Ramsay recipes for 24 hours. This is probably the hardest cooking challenge I have done yet. Gordon Ramsay is one of the most influential chefs in the world, and he's also known for being quite tough in the kitchen. You're f***ing useless. That's why it's called f***ing non-stick! I've had enough! I feel like quite might be an understatement. Nothing can be more difficult than just being able to make his recipes right. But because some of you put it in the comments last time that you wanted to see me take up this challenge, I am here to make it happen. In the next 24 hours, I will be making some of Gordon Ramsay's most viral recipes here on YouTube. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that I recreate this as perfectly as possible so that I won't be an idiot sandwich. But in all seriousness, Gordon Ramsay is a chef that I look up to a lot. While I definitely am intimidated, I am also very excited and I'm actually gonna go straight into it because there is no time to waste. It is eight o'clock in the morning right now and I'm going to make some breakfast. Scrambled eggs are arguably one of Gordon Ramsay's most famous recipes. He's gone on so many shows just to show people how to make what he describes as the perfect scrambled eggs. And there is this huge emphasis placed on it having a creamy and fluffy texture. The most famous technique too is probably the part where he goes on, off, on, off. So that's what I'm going to be trying to do today. And here are the exact ingredients I'm going to be using. We need some eggs, some butter, some creme fraiche, sourdough bread, because this is what Gordon Ramsay serves his eggs on. He also serves it up with some vine tomatoes and some mushrooms and some chives and that's it i'm gonna prep my chives real quick and then i can get started on the eggs wish me luck because i feel like i'm gonna need it slicing up my sourdough bread also making sure i cut a generous portion once that's done i'm gonna saute the mushrooms and the tomatoes putting in two mushrooms whole mushrooms he did say not to slice them up also putting in my vine tomatoes keeping them on the vine i'm gonna leave that there let it do its thing and now i can get started on the eggs over here in my saucepan, three eggs, also a knob of butter. I haven't started the heat yet. I haven't beaten them in together because that's what Gordon Ramsay said that you do not want to do. This is it. This is the most critical part. Putting this over the heat now and I'm just gonna keep stirring and do the on off thing. Gonna get this right. Heat it in. There isn't an exact time frame. I'm just gonna eyeball this once it starts getting a little creamier. Off the heat, back on. This is pretty nerve wracking you guys. Oh my God. Make sure I keep stirring on and off on and off on and off oh my god i think it's coming together i believe this is the part where i add the creme fraiche which will help bring the temperature back down and that is in now i can finally do some seasoning chives in the chives are supposed to make this sexier and based on what i'm smelling i feel like that's true all right so the eggs are now done i'm gonna go grab my bread which has been toasted and plate everything out. First things first is the bread. Then I'm gonna put my mushrooms, the vine tomatoes, drizzle a little bit of olive oil, putting the eggs on. So here we are. This is Gordon Ramsay's definition of a perfect breakfast. I tried to make it look as much like his finished product as possible. I don't normally eat my scrambled eggs like this, but I can totally see why cooking it this way would make it extra creamy and it smells amazing. I really hope I didn't fail. Oh my God, I'm like salivating. This is incredible. It really is super, super fluffy. The sourdough also has this robust flavor to it and paired with the creaminess of the eggs and the fragrance of the chives, everything just like comes together. I feel like I'm eating at a really fancy hotel. I'm also going to give the mushroom and tomatoes a try. I didn't even really need to flavor it because the tomato is already so sweet and the mushroom kind of soaked up a little bit of that flavor. I really can't get over this egg though. I feel like I'm going to be eating incredibly well for the next 24 hours if I do the recipes right. All right, so I'm gonna go make myself a cup of coffee, enjoy it with the rest of breakfast, and I will see you guys when I start working on lunch. Breakfast was pretty incredible, but now I am ready to start making some lunch. I am planning on making Chef Gordon Ramsay's famous 
chicken parm recipe. The specific video I'm following has been viewed 10 million times. Chef Gordon also uses some pretty interesting techniques in this one, so today I'm going to give this a try. Here's what I have. I have my chicken breast here. I also have some broccoli rabe, which is also known as rapini, which is what he serves his chicken parm on. Fresh mozzarella cheese, some smoked paprika, some salt and pepper, some spaghetti. And then I also have the breading station on standby, flour, egg wash, and panko breadcrumbs. And I also went ahead and made some marinara sauce yesterday because I knew I would run out of time today. So thank you me for doing some prep work for myself. Let me get started on the chicken. Cut it in half so then it can double in size. So Chef Gordon actually uses a rolling pin and some parchment paper to roll out his chicken breasts until they're thin and even. Put it on here, cover it up with the other half, and roll it. I am trying real hard here. Well, the good thing is, here's what we have. It does look a lot thinner, which is nice. It definitely works. It just takes a little more time and effort, but I can see why it's useful. Now we have it thinned out and it is ready to be breaded. Okay, Chef Gordon said that panko breadcrumbs as they are, are really boring. We're gonna spice it up the way he did. Adding in some salt and pepper, a little bit of smoked paprika, and then some Parmesan cheese. Generous portion right there. I'm gonna mix this in together. I can smell how good this is going to be already. I'm gonna start off by taking my chicken and just covering it with flour and move to our egg wash and just drown it in the panko breadcrumb mixture. This can ensure that it's going to be very crispy. Once I am 100% sure that this is completely coated, we are going to use that parchment paper rolling method again to kind of press this into the chicken. Just make sure you use the other side so it's not just like, you know, raw meat. The breadcrumbs are really kind of sticking to the chicken now, so that's really cool. The next thing he actually does is to cook his spaghetti. So I'm gonna throw this into the pot right now. Definitely a lot of things going on at the same time, but on the other side here, I am going to start frying up my chicken. Because he uses grapeseed oil, I am also going to be using grapeseed oil. Giving me some nice sizzling sounds. He also specifically mentioned two and a half minutes on each side, so I am timing it on my phone. Around when there's like 30 seconds left, I'm gonna add some butter in because he says it helps make the color an even nicer golden brown. This color is amazing. It is this beautiful golden color. I love it. Smell the cheese, the butter, and okay, let me focus again. It is so gorgeous. We're going to put in two big heapfuls of marinara sauce. Layer on my mozzarella cheese. I know it's like a lot of cheese. Maybe I cut mine a little too big. Salt and pepper. And I'm gonna pop this in the oven just to let the cheese melt a little bit. It is a little tricky trying to do everything all at once, but I have my spaghetti also ready now. Season it with some olive oil again, salt and pepper, just a tablespoon of tomato sauce because you don't wanna drown it in the sauce. Freshly torn basil and parsley. I'm just gonna give this a gentle toss. That's looking pretty good. I also boiled the broccoli rabe and sauteed them really quick. And now I pretty much have all the components ready. I just need to pull out the chicken parm, but I am ready to plate it up. First step is the broccoli rabe, a spoonful of marinara sauce, the chicken parm, which is a giant piece of meat. I don't have that tool that Gordon Ramsay had, but I do have my chopsticks. Put some salsa right on here again. Generous heaping of Parmesan. And there it is. This is Gordon Ramsay's chicken parm. It looks pretty awesome. Ooh, I am so tired. I just need to sit down for a second. Let's see what this looks like if I cut into this chicken. Mm. I'm also really hungry, so I don't know if I'm biased, but this is really good. Remember how we put so much of that flavor in the breading? You really taste it. It's like perfectly seasoned. And then you still get that crisp from the breading as well. And the chicken isn't overcooked. You hear that crunch? I'm gonna eat a little bit of this broccoli rabe for health. Mm -hmm. Isn't too seasoned, so then it complements the taste of the chicken. Plastic going in. I really like what Chef Gordon said about almost just staining the pasta. None of it is too much or too little. I probably didn't have to put that much mozzarella, but I can see why this is another one of his really top recipes. And you know what? The rolling pin trick actually worked because if you look at it, the chicken really isn't too thick at all and the breading actually stuck to it. That's why it's so crispy and so flavorful. Chef Gordon Ramsay, what can I say? I have nothing else to say but 
craze. All right, so I know for dinner, I have a pretty difficult recipe coming up. So I have to do some prep work for that. But for now, I am going to sit down and relax for a little bit more and enjoy my meal. Finished lunch not too long ago, did a lot of cleaning up and checked some emails, but I am actually going to get started on dinner prep. Because for dinner today, I am going to tackle a pretty intense recipe and it does involve a lot more prep time, so let's get started. So what I'm going to attempt to make for dinner is Gordon Ramsay's Beef Wellington recipe. Beef Wellington is probably one of the most classic English dishes. It's actually classified as pie, even though it doesn't look like it. But I would say it's one of the more like extravagant dishes, you know, when you're having like a very fancy dinner, maybe a Christmas dinner, that's when you would enjoy it. I've always wanted to try and make Beef Wellington at home. I guess today is the day. Chef Gordon actually did a video a while back of him making a Christmas version of his beef wellington so I'm actually going to follow that recipe without the chestnuts. Summer right now and I have not been able to find any otherwise everything else will stay the same. Let me show you guys what I've got. This is my beef filet also known as tenderloin steak. I try to wrap it in cling film to help it keep its shape and then we have some mushrooms, some parma ham, some thyme and of course the puff pastry. And then I also have some English mustard, which will paint onto the filet. So essentially you can see that there's just a lot of layers that we'll have to build. So first things first, I'm going to season the beef. Also my tongs here, so I'm ready to do this. There's a lot of oil everywhere. Doing these sides as well. So here I have my beef filet. What I need to do really quickly now is to brush on the English mustard. The beef will then soak up all of that mustard flavor. So now I'm gonna let this rest to a side and get started on the mushrooms. So I have a lot of mushrooms over here and I need to chop them all up. Just following the recipe and frying them until they lose some of that moisture. Chef Gordon also adds in some fresh thyme. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that as well. This is probably gonna take a few minutes. So I'm gonna check back in once this is done. Things are looking pretty okay. Gonna keep going. Now I can get to wrapping. Starting with our Parma ham layer. I feel like essentially this step is like making a log cake, just that instead of cake, it's meat. Parma ham has a really, really strong smell. And according to what Chef Gordon Ramsay said, it helps to add a sort of lightness to the beef wellington. There we go. I'm just adding some pepper. This is what my mushroom looks like right now. It almost looks like ground beef, but it smells really good. I'm going to spread a thin layer on there using the back of a spoon. Make sure this is all even. And then once that's done, it's time for me to put the meat back in here carefully like so, carefully lift this up. There we go, as tight as it can possibly go. Twisting the edges. Once this is looking tight, now I have to chill it in the fridge for 15 minutes. This is what our little package looks like. I've also gone ahead and rolled out my puff pastry. Now it's a matter of wrapping the puff pastry around this meat baby. So just go like this. All around it, like so. Fold this over the sides here, wrap this up again super tightly. It's like a giant sausage right now. You want it to look like this. And I'm gonna let it rest again because that's what Chef Gordon says to do so. It has been another 20 minutes. I have my chilled beef wellington here. I'm gonna unwrap it now and then glaze it with the egg wash and also just carve out a pretty pattern on top. This is what he did. So I'm just mimicking his action. He said to pull it down curve it lightly. I really want this to work. This cut of meat is also extremely expensive. I would not want it to go to waste. Finally, just going to sprinkle on a bunch of salt. I'm gonna be really careful about not overcooking this because Gordon Ramsay would not like that. He also doesn't like it too raw. So medium rare, gonna aim for that. All right, popping this in the oven. Once that's done baking, I have to rest it for a little bit and then it's the final reveal. Fingers crossed again and I'll see you guys soon. All right friends, here it is. My beef wellington is out of the oven and this is what it looks like. The color doesn't look as rich as the one that Chef Gordon Ramsay had, but it smells really good. I'm just a little nervous that it is overcooked. I definitely think it is far from perfection, but I am excited to cut into this now. Oh boy. The juice is running out, but <gasps> you guys, it is not overcooked. Oh my God. You can see the layers here of the puff pastry. I normally love my steak like medium rare, 
almost like rare, medium rare. So this is perfect to me for me. I had very low expectations, but I am very, very happy about this, which means I can now slice it up and plate it up for dinner. Very, very, very exciting. Ooh, all right, I am finally sitting down after a long day. This is how I plated up my beef wellington. I just served it up with some vegetables. The puff pastry has got a little bit soggy, but I think for a first attempt, I am pretty happy. And I apologize in advance to Gordon Ramsay for if I botched it. But as hard as it was, I think it was a really interesting process. And now to taste it. So cheers and I just love steak. So obviously I knew I was gonna love this going into it, but I also like how the addition of the puff pastry adds that sort of butteriness to it. Like I feel like I'm eating a savory pie, which is essentially what this is. Also the mushroom in here, it definitely adds a nice like umami flavor to it. Oh, that's what it is. I was wondering why there was like a slight savory kick in there. It's because of the parma ham, I totally forgot. And the meat because it was seared first and then put in the oven. It's like super, super tender. I think there's a lot of things I learned this time that I probably apply to when I try to make it and next time to make it even better so I'm gonna finish up dinner and then I'm gonna end the day off with a very very nice chocolate dessert that's coming up soon so I finished dinner but I am going to go straight into making dessert because this recipe that I want to do is going to take a lot of time specifically I'm gonna be making chef Gordon Ramsay's chocolate donut recipe where we'll be making donuts from scratch this was the most popular dessert recipe I found so I had to give it a try the reason they take a lot more time is because they are yeast donuts and as you guys know that means it needs time to proof to rise which is why it's going to take around three hours in total but I think it's gonna be really Really worth it if I manage to make it happen. You get this like beautiful chocolate ooey gooey center on the inside and obviously like this pillowy donut on the outside. So let me show you guys the ingredients I have. I have some flour, some milk, some butter, some sugar, and some fresh yeast. Chef Gordon emphasized that if you want fresh donuts, you have to get fresh yeast and therefore here we have it. You also need two egg yolks and of course some salt. And over here for the fill-in, we have a lot of dark chocolate, which is gonna be amazing. We also have some honey, some heavy cream, and actually also some more butter, which I didn't put out here. And then I also have some malt powder, which we'll use to finish off the donuts later. So yeah, with all this measured out, let me get started on the dough. So the first thing he did was to melt the milk and the sugar together in a saucepan, heat it up, just making sure that the sugar is dissolved and the milk is like warm to Touch. While I'm waiting for the milk to warm up, I'm just crumbling up my yeast. And I'm gonna add half of the milk now to the yeast to help it activate. Chef Gordon was stirring this vigorously, so I'm gonna also going to stir this vigorously. That's our yeast mixture. In my remaining milk, I'm going to add the butter and bring this back over to the stove top. So this is supposed to give our dough a bit of silkiness. Everything is better with butter. All right, our butter's been melted. I am going to prep the dry ingredients. Just have some flour here and we're gonna sift it through. Can't forget about the salt. Add in my egg yolks. And then I'm gonna add in this milk and butter mixture, which smells super creamy. Now I can also add in my yeast mixture. He did say that you wanna be careful and not overmix this. We're looking for something stretchy, so I think this is good. We're just trying to pull and fold it into itself. This is pretty much just kneading. So I've made donuts before, but only like mochi donuts, but I do make bread at home and steamed buns, so this is pretty much just like that. Around when it looks like this is when I'm going to put it now in a bowl and cover it up with cling film. The first round of waiting, we have to wait for around one to one and a half hours or until it doubles in size, which also means that by the time this is done, I'll probably be hungry again. So it's been around 45 minutes. My dough is still proofing on the side. It's looking pretty good, but I think I'm gonna get started on the chocolate filling. Over here in a saucepan, I'm just adding in some heavy cream. Then I'm also adding in some honey for flavor. Bringing it over to the stove top and heating it gently. This is what we're gonna use to melt the dark chocolate, which I'm going to chop up super quick. Here's all my chopped chocolate. Now I'm just gonna add in the butter. Now I have my very, very warm honey cream, so I'm gonna pour it into our chocolate butter mixture. It smells so good. Honey and the chocolate and the butter. Forget about the donut. I can just have this fill in. You can see how the butter too has given it that like Beautiful shine. Whisk it gently to make it a little lighter and more aerated, as Chef Gordon said. You can see these like 
beautiful chocolate ribbon. I'm gonna pop it in the fridge so then it can cool down and set a little bit while we start working on the donut dough again. All right, you guys, I gotta show you this dough because look at how big it is now. Remember when I put it in, we only had that small little dough baby. Now it is a full grown adult and it is so light. Very gently roll it out. All right, I think that's good. So now we're going to cut it up. The dough feels right. It feels very light, which is what I think Chef Gordon was aiming for. Now I'm just gonna place them all on this baking sheet because these babies need to proof for another 30 to 40 minutes. You can see that it's almost doubled in volume again. Now I'm gonna heat up the oil in my pan so I can deep fry them. It's a little scary doing this with one hand. I think now we're ready to flip. And it is this beautiful golden brown, looking good. You know it's good when it feels hollow, so I'm gonna take these out. Once I have these poofy little pillows that are very hot, I'm gonna toss them in the sugar, just coat them around. It's this beautifully sugar donut. Wow, this looks like, I feel like I'm at like a fair. Honestly, with how it looks right now, I'm ready to just eat it as is. This is not done. We're actually gonna pipe the chocolate in here. But truly, you guys, I think there is a reason why Chef Gordon spoke so highly of these. Fill it up with this chocolate goodness. You can feel the donut getting heavier. This is now a chocolate bomb. I knew this was the right dessert to make. Here is the beautiful chocolate donut. This dessert is finally done. This is my last meal of today and I cannot wait to tuck in. I'm gonna open one up. Look at this ooey gooey center. Isn't that incredible? Shiny glaze in the middle. Wow, wow. It has a very like light and airy texture to pair that with the chocolate center in the middle. It's almost like eating a lava cake, but in donut form. This honestly tastes like something from a fancy bakery. So thank you, Gordon Ramsay, for making this possible. I am truly blown away. All right, you guys, this marks the end of my 24 hour cooking challenge with Gordon Ramsay recipes. The past 24 hours really have been incredible. I also learned a lot. I feel like I'm experiencing meals from a fancy restaurant from the comforts of my own home. So I am very thankful to those of you who challenged me to do this. I hope I did them justice. I'm excited to see what else you guys would wanna challenge me to do at home. I am looking forward to reading your comments and I will see you guys next time. Bye.